<laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Most of you know me. My name is David Spatzel. I'm just a member here. I have no particular qualifications as a pastor. Uh, my only problem is that I just can't say no. <laughs> I've done services a few times for Pastor Dar, and uh, she knew she was going to be away today. And I think it was like May, and she said, whoa, it did. So, okay, fine. Uh, I should mention that our, our service today is being recorded and will be shared on our website and on the uh, Soggy Times and online newspaper. West Ontario Power tells us we have no power today. I think they're wrong. Because we have lots of power. We're going to start with the very powerful hymn, Amazing Grace. Right again. Right again. Right again. How do you know that? What tells you? 
tells you that, you have to do it again. Three, 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 three. three. Oh, okay. Now let's try another one. Word is? Receive. Receive. What does that mean? Again. Plant it again. Plant it again. And what tells you that? Read. Read. And the word is? Reform. And what does that mean? Form again. Form again. And what tells you that? So today we're going to learn about reformation. So something that had happened, but it's going to be done a little differently. And that something was caused by Martin Luther. So he was reforming the church as he saw it at that time. Thank you. Yay, Monica. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. We continue with the Kyrie.
continue with the prayer of the day, which you'll find at the beginning, at the front of your Celebrate bulletin, if you can read it. We pray together. Almighty God, gracious Lord, we thank you that your Holy Spirit renews the church every day. Pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep them set fast in your word. Protect and comfort them in times of trial. Defend them against all enemies of the gospel. And bestow on your church your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts. And I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me. From the greatest of them, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The life better here. Um, today the psalm is Psalm 46. We'll sing in response to the whole verse. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. in his sight by deeds prescribed by the law. For through the law comes the knowledge of sin. But now, apart from law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed and is attested by the law and the prophets, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They are now justified by his grace as a gift 
through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement for his blood, effective through faith. He did this to show his righteousness because in his divine forbearance, he had passed over the sins previously committed. It was to prove at the present time that he himself is righteous and that he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of boasting? It is excluded. By what law? By that of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that a person is justified by faith apart from works prescribed by the law. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. <coughs> Please rise for the <coughs> gospel acclamation. You and I, and all the people of the world, can read 
the good news whenever we choose. And why and how can we do this? <coughs> That's not the Bible. Bible's already. <laughs> By reading the Bible. <clears throat> and who made it possible for us to do that? Well, this being Reformation Sunday, you probably already guessed that I speak of Martin Luther. Martin Luther was born in Eisleben. Saxony in 1483. As a young man, he was studying at the University of Erfurt to become a lawyer. One day, while returning home from his studies, he was caught in a terrible thunderstorm. When lightning struck nearby, Luther fell to his knees and began to pray. Apparently, God often used lightning, uses lightning to get people's attention. While on his knees, Luther took an oath that if God would spare his life, he would devote what remained of him to the service of God. He survived. Luther gave up his studies of the law and became a monk. In July 1505, Luther moved into an Augustinian monastery. He continued his studies there and at the University of Erfurt. In 1512, he received his doctorate and became a biblical studies professor at the University of Wittenberg. Europe in the 1500s was a very different place than what we know today. The Black Plague had, had uh, ravaged Europe in the 1300s, reducing its population by as much as 60%. While a warm period of good cropping weather existed from about 950 to 1250, this was followed by what is termed the Little Ice Age, from about 1300 to 1800. The resulting crop failures and famine further reduced the population of Europe. With the decline in population, revenue for the Catholic Church also saw a decline. Funds were needed for the general expenses of the Church, but more specifically for the rebuilding of the St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. In the late Middle Ages, the practice of the sale of indulgences by the Church was becoming quite prominent. Indulgences were said by the Church to provide forgiveness for sins in the exchange for money. It was said to be possible to obtain forgiveness for a loved one who had died and was now believed to be in purgatory. One of the most notorious sellers of indulgences was said to be Johann Tetzel, whose famous saying was, as soon as the coin in the copper rings, a soul from purgatory springs. At the time of Luther, many clergy were displeased at the excesses of the church, especially the sale of indulgences. Late Luther famously put these concerns in a letter to his bishop, Albrecht von Brandenburg, which came to be known as his 95 Theses. He may or may not have also nailed these theses to the church door in Wittenberg. The most famous thesis is number 86, which translates as, Why does the Pope, whose wealth today is greater than the wealth of the richest Krakus, build the Build the Basilica of St. Peter with the money of poor believers rather than his own money. Needless to say, Luther's views, which were now widely distributed thanks to the newly invented Gutenberg printing press, created quite a stir. Eventually, Luther was called on the carpet to answer for his writings at a sort of tribunal at, a, at the city of Worms, a city on the Rhine. He was told to recant his views or face excommunication. Luther answered, Unless I am convinced by the testimony of the scriptures, or by clear reason, I am bound by the scriptures I have quoted, and my conscience is, conscience is captive to the word of God. I cannot and will not recant anything, since it is neither safe nor right to go against conscience. He concluded with, Here I stand, I, can do, I cannot do otherwise. God help me, all men. Despite being free to leave Worms after being excommunicated, excommunicated, Luther feared for his life. On his return home, Frederick III of Saxony arranged for Luther to be abducted and spirited away to his castle in Wartburg. While cloistered there, Luther translated the New Testament into German. It was his wish that the common people be able to read the Bible themselves rather than relying on the clergy to interpret it for them. The translation of the New Testament took four months 
and was published in September 1522. People worth working with Luther completed the translation of the entire Bible by 1534. In 1535, Luther married Katharina von Bora, a former nun. The couple had six children. Luther continued to write, including many hymns, one of which we will sing today. Luther died in February 1546, but as we Lutherans know, his church lives on. <clears throat> Luther's views, with the help of the printing press, spread throughout the Western world. Reformers such as Ulrich Zwingli in Switzerland, John Knox in Scotland, and John Calvin in France continued his work. William Tyndale completed his first translation of the Bible to English in 1526. The King James Authorized Version was published in 1611. Many view the Reformation as the beginning of the modern era. The rapid sharing of <coughs> radical views with the help of the printing press is in some ways analogous to the influence of the internet today. To conclude, you may be wondering why do we do good deeds here on earth if we know we will be saved by sola fide? Why do we give food to the food bank? Why do we help little old ladies across the street? Why do we support the work of the church? Why we do, do we do it to obtain salvation? No, it's the other way around. We don't do it to receive your salvation. We do it because we are saved. To quote Luther, here I stand, I can do no other. May God help me. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We continue with Luther's most famous hymn, The Mighty Fortress is Our God.
Holy and the transformative power of God's loving spirit, let us pray with the church, the world, and all in need. God, our parent, you call us your children and have made us siblings through your Son, Jesus. Heal the church's many divisions, bring understanding and peace where there has been contention and strife, and unite us in one body through the love of Christ. God of grace, hear our prayer. God, our Creator, your hands have made the heights of the mountains, the depths of the sea, and the light that animates all creation. Bring relief to areas harmed by wildfires, floods, storms, and human carelessness. Renew the face of the earth, God of grace. Hear our prayer. God, our ruler, the nations rage and the kingdoms shake, but your word stands fast forever. Let your justice and peace roll down like waters wherever there is strife, injustice, war, or religious conflict, especially Israel and Palestine. God of grace, hear our prayer. God, our champion, you are our refuge and strength the very present help in times of trouble. Draw near to all who suffer. Be their rest and comfort, God of grace. Hear our prayer. God, our reformer, you make all things new. Free us from complacency, <coughs> open us to unexpected ways, and kindle zeal in us for the future. We pray for the young people, affirming their baptism with them, Stir in us a desire for your wisdom, God of grace. Hear our prayer. God, our Savior, you made yourself known in the lives of all who have died in the hope of your grace. We give thanks for, for the witness of reformers like Martin Luther and for all whose example has brought us closer to you, God of grace. Hear our prayer. Gracious God, into your hands we commend all for, for whom we pray, trusting in your unlasting, unending love and amazing grace, through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. Amen. Please share a sign of peace with the congregation.
O oh God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need, awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end bring all the world to your feast through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom, with you and the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory. Amen. We continue with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory. Pay for our sins that we may have eternal life. All we need to do is believe and follow Jesus, and we will be saved. May God bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our closing in today is my favorite. Go now in peace. Share the good news.